Hey everyone, this week I have another freebie for you. It's not a plugin, but it's a motion template that you can publish to Final Cut Pro and use however you want. I provided a link below that you can download a zip file. And once extracted, you can open it in motion. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how it works. Once you've extracted the zip file, a folder appears labeled Paint Strokes. Open it up and double click the project file to launch motion. I'll press the home key, then the space bar to play it back for you. So you can see why we named the project Paint Stroke, as the animation reveals a series of paint strokes that reveal three sets of drop zones with titles. It's a fun opening title treatment that I'm sure you'll find a variety of uses for. In the layers list, each element has been clearly labeled. For example, unchecking the box next to Drops will hide and reveal the drop zones, and clicking the box next to Backsplats will hide and reveal the background paint splatters. The background group includes a brush texture image and an animated mask that creates a wipe at the end of the animation. You might want to use this template just as it is, but you might want to make some small modifications. I'm going to show you a few things you can do very easily without you having to get deep into the weeds of using motion. One thing you might want to change is the background perhaps using another graphic, or a photo from your Photos app. Select the Library tab, then the Photos app at the bottom of the list. I favorited a number of photos on my iPhone, and because iCloud syncs all my apps, my favorite photos are available right here in Motion. Locate your photo, then drop it directly under the brush layer. When you see the hook icon, release your mouse. You'll need to resize the photo by selecting the layer, then go to the Inspector tab. Then in the Properties tab, drag the scale slider until the photo fits the viewer. I'll press Command Z a few times to return to the brush graphic. Another thing you might want to play with is how the paint strokes animate. Select the camera layer at the top of the layers list in the timeline. Then click the Show Hide Keyframes button to reveal the keyframes for that layer. These three keyframes right here control the speed of the camera as it moves from the front of the paint strokes to behind them. I'll move this keyframe later in time and play that back. Play around with moving the keyframes closer to each other or further away to change up the look of the animation. The other thing you might want to play with is the number of text lines. I'll park the playhead over this first set of titles and spill open the text01 group. For my video, I only want one line of text for each set, so I'll turn off the two subtitle layers, then do the same for the second text group. The third text group only has one title, so I don't need to do anything for that one. You can also play with how the title animates on by moving the keyframes for that particular text layer. There's actually quite a bit you can do to modify this template, but for this video, I want to keep things simple. In a future video, we'll get into how you might go further with this and rig it for even more control in Final Cut Pro. But for now, let's publish it as is. From the file menu, choose Publish Template. Place a check next to Publish as Final Cut Generator and give the template a name. I'll name it Paint Strokes. I've already created a category called Steve's Generators to save it into. Then I'll publish it. In the interest of time, I already have a Final Cut project open and I've connected the generator above a gap clip. Now you can add the template directly into the primary storyline, but using a gap clip will give you more flexibility when working with it, as you'll see in a moment. I've already replaced the drop zones in the template with clips from the browser. If you've been watching our videos, you should already know how to add clips to drop zones and how to position them relative to the drop zone. If not, there's a link below where I cover how to work with drop zones. I've also replaced the placeholder text with something more playful and changed the color so that it pops against the background. Additionally, I published controls for changing the background color and the paint splatter color. 
The main reason you want to connect the template above a gap clip is that you can trim the gap so that the template can wipe to the next shot in your timeline. Unless you're on an M1 Mac, you'll most likely need to render the template before playing back. Here's the finished title. Take my hand and I'll be your guide I'll take you places that you'd never find I know something about a state of mind I've got the dreamer in me, the dreamer.